Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here with the Man Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the updates on what's going on not only with Invest 99L, what's going on with these next couple of storms that is coming. Because we're starting to get some strong signals of what could be coming out of this big storm that is coming after the one this weekend. We're getting some severe weather already, but we are going to be above average in this warm pattern. And the euro is starting to come around to the GFS. And this is going on a high ridge towards the upper Midwest and not really going towards Ohio Valley with this next big storm. Like I said, it's just too far to know for sure, but I will show you the updates. Now, as of this morning, Invest 99L is at 40 miles per hour winds and moving east at eight miles per hour. You can see most of the ensemble showing that it will do a curve. That's because it's going to get hit with this cold front and the tail end of these cold fronts always help whip up some of these low pressures now i'll show you the temperatures is right in 80 degrees at this mark so that's why it's able to sustain itself and as it moves northward it shouldn't be able to hold together much at all because of the temperatures it's just too cool of waters to produce any kind of tropical anything but as it goes around and gets hit with that cold front it will energize it a little bit more and is still becoming a hurricane in the Atlantic. And you can see as it swirls around the Atlantic, we get this first setup that does come through, still going towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, bringing a lot of rainfall, some snowfall, and a lot of wet snow with it, with some freezing rain still. Then we have the setup on that next big storm. And you can see how it's going up on a higher ridge now, going towards the upper Midwest and not going towards Ohio Valley. But still, this is bringing severe weather with it, and there is some chances for some damage and winds. Still a little too far to be sure on what the impacts will be, but I will give you a quick update on what it's looking like. Now, National Hurricane Center still has it at 40% in 48 hours, 50% in the next five days. This will update again this morning, but still is no threat to anyone. But you also can see here that by Friday, the low is expected to move over cool waters and interact with a mid-latitude trough, limiting the potential of a tropical transition at that time. So it has up to that time to try and strengthen some. But then we have this cold front coming through, knocking it for a loop, literally, and then strengthening it up a little bit more before it goes towards the cool waters. I'm still showing a hurricane. And as we take it to potential velocity anomaly to see what's in store, you can see how weak this system is expected to be in the Atlantic. This is according to the GFS. And the Euro shows it even weaker, still has a chance to strengthen up as it goes towards the Northern Atlantic sometime around eight to 10 days away. And when we look with the long range with the Euro, you can see that we also have a chance for another one to form up in the Atlantic sometime around the beginning of January. Now, this is probably no threat to anybody else, but we do need to keep our eye on this. It could affect the UK, it could affect Portugal, maybe even some of the islands, La Palma or Azores. It could be issues with that, but that's still way down the road. You can see right here with your temperatures that it is literally sitting in 80 degree waters right on the edge, because right above it, it starts cooling off considerably. So as it goes on this loop, it will stay okay with warm waters and gets hit with that cold front. But once it starts going to the east northeast, it won't be able to sustain itself because the temperatures are going below 80 degrees. And you can see here, according to the Euro, that as we go through the days, it does strengthen up, go in that loop, and it does strengthen down to a hurricane status as we get into Thursday. As we get these cold fronts to start whipping off the east coast, Still showing it has a great chance to interact, get some energy, and go down to a major hurricane. Now that's a little concerning because these waters are going to be very cool at this point. Still, it's seen by the Euro and it's seen by GFS that it could still be potentially a major hurricane in the Atlantic. So it has to begin some energy off these tail whips from these cold fronts because the water is going to be way too cool for it to just strengthen up by itself. And that's what I have playing in the beginning of the video. So you can see right here with HRRR for the next 48 hours, we're gonna continue getting that rain going towards the Northeast. And as we go into Wednesday, we're gonna get another strip of rain coming through to South Central, and that will go through the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as well. Still bringing flooding issues starting on Wednesday as this big plume starts going towards Ohio Valley. And you can see with National Weather Service in the next two to three days, then it's gonna start adding up to some precipitation. Even once you go five days and seven days, it's gonna continue to add up because these storms are still training in the same area. But still, let's keep it 
within the first few days because we all know everything always changes. And you can see the amount of precipitation that's coming just within the next three days. And you can see within the next 72 hours, you're still getting one to two inches of heavy rainfall for eastern Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, and is still going towards Tennessee, Kentucky Valley with heavy precipitation also. Now, West Virginia is on it and Virginia, West Virginia is still going to be in this heavy precipitation. It's been showing the same thing for a few days. And we still have the flash flooding that is going to happen for Wednesday. So if you're in this green, you're in a marginal all the way from Texas all the way towards Tennessee. And the slight risk is going to be for eastern Oklahoma, northern Arkansas, and southern Missouri. A big hot spot for the heaviest rainfall to add up. So you can see the next three days is set up a little bit better here from National Weather Service. So for today, you're going to have thunderstorms in all this dotted green. You're going to have rain in all this green with some mixed precipitation, some freezing rain for the New England states, and a little bit across Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and Michigan with the snow being up here in the upper Midwest. Now as you go through tomorrow for Wednesday, this is where you have the heavy flash flooding, the risk of Possible flooding coming out of this with your thunderstorms being in all this dotted green with the snow being way up here in the upper Midwest. And as you go through Thursday, this is where the setup is going to begin. We're going to be in above average temperatures, way warmer, just like I showed you the last couple days. And for Thursday, you have a big hot spot for Kansas and Nebraska for freezing rain, snow in this white, and mixed precipitation in this blue as well as the west coast. You can see how you're getting a lot of rain with the heavy snow in the higher elevations. With all these storms in the dotted green, it's still going to be a big rain event. And you can see that set up on the next storm here from National Weather Service. This is your seven day hazard outlook. And you can see you have heavy snowfall in this darker greenish blue right here. And you have heavy rain in this green, as well as heavy rain in these green areas with heavy precipitation in these light blue areas. Now these light blue areas does have a chance for this to turn into the snowfall also right here for the Northeast. But everybody else is just going to see a lot of rain. It's not going to be tons and tons of snow coming down, guys. So as we look with the latest update from the Euro, you can see how much lighter the snowfall amounts is. This is all three to five inches just within the next six days with a hot spot potential for northern Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin, anywhere from seven inches to almost a foot. It all depends. We're still too far away to know for sure. And I can always go forward and show you even more major snowfall. And you see how it went all the way towards the upper Midwest if that even happens, it's still too far to be sure. And that's because it's starting to agree with the GFS that is going up on this higher ridge and not dragging out towards the northeast. But we're starting to see a little trend. You can see with the Canadian, it's also agreeing that that heavy precipitation show by National Weather Service could end up being some snowfall in the northeast. And we could get some snowfall over here for the upper Midwest. Now, this is still six days away. It's still subject to change after two or three days. But this is a chance for major snowfall for northern Iowa, southern Wisconsin. That, that little area, just like the Euro is showing, Canadian is seeing this potential also. Still take this with a grain of salt, guys. It's still six days away. And once again, we can always go further and show an extreme pattern, which we all know will change. But the Canadian is the only model that is picking up the freezing rain potential that National Weather Service is seeing. Euro, GFS, they're all showing a little bit of sporadic, just like you see over here. Canadian is the only one picking up that possibility for Kansas and Nebraska, maybe even Iowa, to get in on that freezing rain as it transitions from daytime to nighttime and starts putting down the snowfall. And the update with the GFS, it is coming around just a little bit more, agreeing with the Canadian that it could be some good snowfall over here for northeastern Pennsylvania, western New York, that little hot spot that could get anywhere from three to five, maybe even three to seven or eight inches. It's still too far to be sure, so please take this with a grain of salt. As it becomes some snowfall possible for Nebraska, Dakotas, even northern Minnesota, as this transitions over towards the Great Lakes, we're going to be on a big warm-up, guys. It is going to be a lot of wet snow. And you can see right here from National Weather Service, the next 6 to 10 days, temperature probability that you're going to be below average on the west side of the U.S., while you're going to be well above average on the east side of the U.S., especially the Great Lakes 
and the Northeast, well above average temperatures for this time of year. So as we take a gander and see what's going on with these two storms, you can see with the Euro as you go into Thursday, you start getting that wet snow that turns into snow for Nebraska and Kansas. And then it goes towards the upper Midwest, bringing rainfall in the blue, wet snow in the green, and snow in the white. So first you're going to have snow, and then it's going to turn into wet snow over that as it passes by. This is for Thursday, going into Friday, bringing wet snow for Wisconsin, Michigan, even when it goes towards the northeast. You are getting wet snow, but you do have a pocket where you do have a chance for snowfall by Saturday. But there is going to be a lot of wet snow and a lot of rain involved because we're in this above average pattern and it is going to be warmer temperatures. But that next system is starting to show a strong signal where we can start taking this a little bit more seriously. So by Monday, we're already talking days away. Strong surface low forming up, bringing these warm temperatures, getting rain. But you can see all the snow that is going to be happening for the west side of the U.S. because you are in below average temperatures. And then you can see right here with the Euro that it's agreeing with the GFS that now it's going towards the upper Midwest. Bring a lot of rain, bringing snow, but then it's bringing wet snow right after that snowfall and possibly some rain after that as well. So I think there will be a good snowfall amount coming. It's too far to be sure. I can't say that enough. But I think it will be for the upper Midwest and not going so far into the Great Lakes or Ohio Valley. It's just too far to be sure to know for sure, guys. The temperatures are really doing a battle, and I'm seeing a lot of wet snow. But National Weather Service is starting to give us some information on that, and they did put out a severe weather watch for for day seven guys this is all the way from monday into tuesday right before this setup happens and you're in a big 15 percent for severe weather and this includes dallas texas fort worth texas tulsa oklahoma arlington texas and plano texas so as we take a look and see what's going on from that monday to that tuesday just to get a little look ahead remember this will be subject to change this is literally six days away that we started getting our warm temperatures because we're above average in our temperatures and you can see as you go from monday into tuesday you get a big 60s even the 70s in the south and it starts raising all the way up to the great lakes bringing 50s and 40s with y'all temperatures are just too warm i showed y'all a few days ago that that would not be possible with these warm temperatures coming out. But you can also see that it is bringing some dew points. And you can see up here that it is literally at the end of the run. So I cannot say it enough in this video. It is too far to be crying wolf or screaming out. But you can see it is bringing high dew points in the 60s and possibly the 70s as you go from Monday into Tuesday. And that's what's bringing your severe weather event. As this cold front comes through, there is that severe weather chance. And so far, the Cape, the lift, is a pretty strong lift. You can see it going all the way up towards Nebraska, all the way to Iowa with this lift. And you can't have this lift in freezing temperatures. This will be a warm-up we're going through with some strong lift in the South Central from Monday into Tuesday. A good chance for severe weather to pop up. And so far, it is bringing some thunderstorms with it. You can see with your lightning strikes as you go from Monday into Tuesday. I'm not seeing a lot of white in there where it's got chances for large hail, but you do see a little bit of bowing out in there where it could bring some winds with that as well. So you do have some storms coming to the south central and the deep south monday into tuesday and you can see here with the euro all the rainfall that's adding up till then and then when we go that monday into that tuesday it is bringing more rainfall to the deep south and the tennessee kentucky valley while all this precipitation up here has a chance to be rain wet snow even some good snowfall before some wet snow i still think the heaviest snowfall if this big storm still shows true in six or seven days will be montana dakotas maybe nebraska maybe Iowa and Minnesota, maybe even northern Wisconsin. But I'm not showing it going too far southern past that. And when you check your winds to see if there's any chance for tornadoes when that does happen, because your dew points do strengthen up, you can see as you go Monday and a Tuesday, you have some strong winds coming about, but I'm not showing a lot of chances for any tornadoes to pop up, guys. So far, it looks like severe thunderstorms, maybe some damaging winds. And as it goes towards Tuesday, it does start to strengthen up with some chances for some winds 
to pop up from Tuesday and Wednesday on the east side of that storm as it goes towards the northeast with the winds. But still too far to know for sure what is going on with that as well. Because you can see you're getting 50s and 60s for Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as it goes up to the northeast bringing winds to Canada. Also winds off the coast of the northeast. But the euro is showing the opposite. It's showing it'll be on the north side. So it's still not knowing what's coming out of this storm. We are starting to get some signals. I just don't want to give you false information that's going to change day by day. But thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I hope you all have a blessed day. I will be getting this generator, possibly two of them, maybe today. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a giveaway on that tomorrow. And I have a weather station that I possibly want to give away as well that I will talk to you more about later on this week. Psalm 111. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upper right and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Amen. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. God bless you and your family. I will update you as we get closer and we know a little more of what's going on. You see how much it is changing. But I really hope that y'all have a very great Tuesday out there today. All glory does go to Yahweh, our Father in heaven. And may he bless us forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.